Hi everyone, welcome back to another video by Eclip on my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to show you how to prepare the stems for mixing and mastering. So if you are a music producer or a sound engineer or an artist, you likely came across the term audio stems. But what exactly are audio stems and why they are so crucial in the world of music production and sound design? In this video, we will demystify the concept of audio stems and explore their importance in creating high quality audio recordings and mixes and how to prepare them. So the question is, what are the audio stems? So audio stems are individual isolated audio tracks that make up the complete recording or a mix. So each stem represents a specific element of the composition, such as vocals, drums, uh, guitars, keyboards, or any other instrument or sound source used in the production. So once we have the track done and we decide to send it for mixing and mastering, the best practice is to create the audio stems and that way reduce the number of audio tracks that will be mixed. In Citrus Music, we mostly use a lot of channels to create our music and in many cases that number can be over 100 channels. Now the pricing for mixing can be offered by a mixing engineer by recommending the price depending on each track, while the industry standards are that it would be charged by the number of stems. Considering this, we should come to the right number of audio channels or the stems so that mixing engineer can do the best job, but also we should be smart and make just enough stems for the process to save some time and money. For mixing and mastering the Citron's track, I will provide you detailed instructions on what I believe is the best way to prepare your stems for the mixing. I will present you the track that is not completely done, but it is good enough as this is the project that I work on. So the first recommendation, I would say the kick should go in the full length. So let's say that this is the end of a track, just after 177 bar, I will solo the kick and then I will go file export and then by the export it really depends from your DAW in some of them you can use the batch export but I believe that just soloing and exporting one by one is the best practice of course that means that you do not have anything on your master channel when it comes to the levels I believe that if you just not go in clipping that you're good enough everything else can be done or the whole levels of the whole mix can be reduced by the mixing engineer and I honestly believe that all the leveling and everything else in the way of preparation should be done by the mixing engineer itself so from your side it's only important that you do not clip any of your or distort any of your elements the kick I will send as a one stem so this is the really important part as the kick is going to be really important in our tracks so I would give this option in full that mixing engineer have all the abilities to mix it or to do certain changes now if you use the kick hi-hat as I do in this case then I would consider like sending it as a one stem together with the kick because it is this hi-hat is just a part of the kick itself. If there is a need to use the kick and the kick hi-hat separated, this request can be sent over to you by the mixing engineer and it can be solved after this. Now the second element is the baseline. We definitely want to have the baseline, so the full ability of mixing only the baseline and applying a certain processing on the baseline itself only. So kick the baseline. Then if you are using multi-layered baseline as I do in this track, I have two more layers for the baseline. Then you can side by yourself you can send all the other layers of the baseline as the top layers you can send separately from the baseline but if you believe that your baseline sounds good enough with all of them together you can send all the baseline channels into the one stem now when it comes for the drums there are some super important ones for example the snare snare has an important part because it's really unique in the whole drum sections it's covering the mid and the high range and also the snare's dynamic will be of huge importance how the track is going to sound and how hard it will hit on the kick when i say that i mean the mixing engineer should be able to process the transient the body the tail of the snare separately snare needs to go as a one stem so another really important part of the drum sections is the open hat the open hat we will play in the most or the peak moments of our tracks and it will have a great value because it's going to chop in between of these kicks and the open hat dynamics will be also important equally as the snare dynamics now if you use the closed hi-hat in the same position as open hat something like this then I would consider sending this one separately as well. While all the rest, like loops, these fast hi-hats, everything else can go into the one stem, this one. So all these elements, all of them you can send as a one stem because the processing of them together will actually also help the increase the sound of the whole track. Now we are moving to the uplifters and crashes. So how do I divide them? I have one folder for all of them together, but I divide them into the impacts, like all the elements that are hitting, that are creating certain punch of the track, something like this explosion over here, let's say. 
the clap long, I use like the clap on the reverb and a delay. Also like this one. So all of them that are kind of hitting them and that they are creating a certain impact of the track. Together with the crash, you can select and solo all of them and export as a one stem. Now there are risers as well, the same elements as the impacts, just in opposite direction. So the elements that are starting low and that are increasing the energy. By that, I mean the snare roll, something like this. Risers. This noise risers. So solo all of them and send them as a one stem as well. Now we are moving to the fills. I use a lot of fills as I like to combine them and use a different rhythmical patterns, but all of them can fit into the one stem. So basically grouping all the elements that are necessary into the one. This will decrease the number of the channels that mixing engineer will mix. It will fasten up the whole time. It will save a lot of time to the mixing engineer for sorting out all the elements. And also it will reduce the price of the mixing services. Now, when we come to the leads and by leads, I mean all the sequences that are repeating, that have a certain rhythmical pattern or melodic. It really doesn't matter. It can be only rhythmical one note or it can be just the riffs or whatsoever. So all the rhythmical patterns that are repeating themselves and that we're creating a single sequence. For example, I have this bass over here then in this part i have this one and this one so i would never send them as a one stem because they are pretty important they will play in a low and low mid area and i believe that mixing engineers should be able to access all the possible processes and all possible techniques to fix those sounds if they are problematic they can create a whole mess in the track so i would all of them send separately like baseline separated this one and the third one all now all the other elements as well i would also send them separately like i would call this one baseline one this is additional groove elements layer one additional groove elements layer two now when it comes to the different or the melodic content something like this all these main leads in my tracks i always layer in order to increase the sound quality but when it comes for mixing i will always send them as a one stem and this is what they do in my tracks once i come up to the end of a track i will bounce them as a one unit and that way i will try to decrease the number of the stems as i'm coming closer to the final mix so therefore like if you have melodies or the elements that are same just duplicate it to the layers in order to increase the sound design solo all of them together what i usually do i select them in a group like all of these three together Together, and then I can export them as a one stem. So if there are multi-layers channels, but multi-layers or different layers that are creating one sequence, then export all of them together. But if they are like the baseline, like this one over here, but they create a different rhythmical pattern, like they do not match, it is not the same MIDI, they go differently, then separating all of them. And now we come to the single shot sounds. When it comes to the single shot sounds type, this is really not important when it comes for mixing and mastering, but how would I send all of this together? So when it comes to the single shot sounds, I would always consider to send as less stems as possible, but I would group all these single shots into the separate stems just if they do not overlap one with each other. For example, I can use this one voice noise over here. And I can send these vocals because this way I'm sure that they do not overlap. So there is not even one position in the track where these two channels are going to go together. As I can see, there is another. Yeah, this one I cannot use because it goes already. Because these are vocals and this sample is pretty long, I would consider them maybe sending only separated, but I would group this one because they do not overlap together. Now, when it comes to this one, this one is also pretty long. I will send this separately as well. But when it comes to these small ones, as they do not overlap one with each other, I would group them into the one and I will try to see if there is any other that is not overlapping, like maybe this one. And I will set them before i'm just sending to the mixing session i would place them one below each other so i can just see if they are overlapping on certain positions those three can go together this would be another one now the job is much easier because i have the other single shot sounds that i use much less so this one can go with together with this one this one also now we have these single shot sounds like in this place then in this place then in this place then we have this one which is overlapping with this one but i already have this one separated over here and this one i have separated over 
here. So mixing engineer can chop it from this part of a track, place it over here if the mixing engineer needs to process them separately. This overlap is not important because there are positions in the track where they are on solo and they do not overlap. Now this one I would not consider in this group because it's merging over here. But again, this one is placed over here. But then we won't have this one that is goes on solo in each position because it overlaps with this one over here and it overlaps with this one over here. So I wouldn't use this one. Now for the second one, again, it is the same thing. Now the third one, maybe this one can go over here. Let me just position it over here. Let me just select them. So this one is maybe over here. Yeah, so I would consider sending this one as well. And that way continue and do all of them together and combine them and try to make up to 20 stems at most, as I believe this would be the best for sending all that material in a full quality length, in a full length of the full track. So this would be 20 full quality audio stems or the full tracks that you will need to send to the mixing and mastering engineer. It will be easier to upload it. It will be easier to process. It will be easier for a mixing engineer to sort them out and it will fasten up the whole process. Now to answer the many questions, if you are interested in hiring me for mixing and mastering, you can do it on the following link. You can find it in the description or you can visit my website www.eclip.com and you can find all the information up there. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon with another video. Bye.